this morning. We're turning to 1 Samuel chapter 3, the first book of Samuel chapter 3, please. 1 Samuel chapter 3, and commencing to read at verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 3, and commencing to read from verse number 10. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. You can see the responsibility of every preacher. He's got to preach what the Lord has told and not allowed to hold back. Look at verse 14. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee. And more also, if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him, and, and he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan, even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. The word progress this morning, the word progress carries with it a great sense a great sense of maturing. But you know, child of God this morning, brother in Christ, sister in Christ, even though the word progress gathers with it or carries with it that great sense of maturing, yet it doesn't guarantee maturity. It may carry with it a sense of maturing, but it doesn't guarantee maturity. Being in circular business for many, many years, I have saw people progressing in business, but they never matured. Oh, they progressed, but they never matured. I have seen it in ministry. Men progressing in ministry but never matured. The word progress carries with it this morning a great sense of maturing, but it doesn't guarantee maturity. Maturity is a fruit this morning that comes from proper progress. 
You may say to me, well, George, what's proper progress? What is proper progress? Proper progress is doing something not in the way that we like. Proper progress is doing something not in the way that we like or we like, but in the way in which we should. Proper progress is not done by doing something in a way that we like it done, but in the way in which it should be done. That's proper progress. The late Christopher Reeve, who was an, an American actor himself, said, Superman was a hero not because he had the power, but because he had the wisdom and he had the maturity to use that power wisely. Let me repeat that. Superman was a hero, not because he had the power, but because he had the wisdom and the maturity to use that power wisely. You see, child of God, this morning, it's the same this morning with spiritual maturity. You know, spiritual maturity is found on the perfect path of proper progress. Let me stress this this morning. Spiritual maturity is not a one-step experience. Spiritual maturity is no quick fix in the life of any believer. Amy Carmichael, the great lady of God that you was, said, as she used to read over the great heroes of the faith, she said within herself, I could never become any person such as them. And then Amy Carmichael went on to say, I began to learn that the great heroes of the faith reached their peak by many steps that contain blood and sweat and tears. Many small steps that included blood, sweat, and tears, Amy Carmichael was able to see, brought them where they were. And of course, she experienced that herself. I believe one of the great problems today is this. So many of God's people today suffer from spiritual immaturity, spiritual immaturity. Do you remember when Paul wrote his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 1, Paul said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. He recognized that the believers who he was writing to were immature in the faith. He says, but unto carnal even as unto babes in Christ. I wonder this morning, child of God, are you maturing? Am I maturing? On Wednesday morning, as I go through the Bible every year, and in my own quiet devotional times we are in this week, we just entered into 1 Samuel chapter 3. And as I was reading 1 Samuel chapter 3, God spoke to me through this verse. And this verse jumped out and said, Preach from me on the Lord's day morning. And here's the text. Let's read it together. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. On Wednesday morning, 
I got down on my knees and I sought the Lord concerning my own spiritual life. And I said, Lord, speak to me before you speak to the congregation. The Lord wants every one of us this morning to do a spiritual checkup on ourselves, not others. The Lord wants us all this morning to do a spiritual checkup on ourselves, not others. You see, in that text, this is how the text begins. And Samuel grew. I want you to notice, first of all, in that text, there is the sign of Samuel's proper progress. And Samuel grew. Samuel is one of my favorite Old Testament prophets. And I have noticed every year as I have read this year in and year out, you know, from day one, that was the story of Samuel. From day one, child of God, the sign of proper progress was evident. In Samuel's life. In fact, in chapter, in chapter, back in chapter 2, it says in verse 21, And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Verse 26, And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. And in our text this morning, And Samuel grew, child of God, he grew from day one. Samuel grew. I love the wee verse in verse 21. It says, And Samuel grew on. It was continual. And child of God, as I looked at this, and as I studied this, do you want, do you want to know something? The marks of maturity were there from day one. I wonder this morning, child of God, is the marks of maturity, spiritual maturity. Tell me this, child of God, I had to do some hard searching, and there's nobody needs it more than me. And I wonder as you look into that heart, or as, as I have had to look into my heart, tell me, is there the marks of spiritual maturity in these lives of ours? The writer to the Hebrews said, Hebrews 5, verse 12, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. You know, child of God, the writer to the Hebrews was expecting that these believers that he was writing to, that they were, should be matured, that they should be progressing. But there was no progress. There was no sign of maturity. And he said that I should teach you again, which should be the first principles of the oracles of God, are became as such as need of milk and not of strong meat. Do you know, child of God, this morning, too many Christians are stuck at John 3.16. They're still feeding of John 3.16. Listen, child of God, we have to get off the battle. Believers this morning, we have to get off the bottle this morning. Some are in the milk too long. W.P. Nicholson says there's too many believers. And they've been saved for years and they're still being bottle fed. Only he put it stronger than that. And you know, child of God, in chapter 1, verse 24, it says there that Hannah weaned him. Hannah had to get him off the milk. 
You know, child of God this morning, that's something we have to progress in. It's all right getting saved, but we need to grow. We need to get off the John 3.16. We need to get into the Bible. We need to get into the meat of the Word. So many believers have been saved for so long, but they're still in the pram. Still needing others to push them. Still needing others to guide them. You know, child of God, who taught you how to walk? Well, your mother or your father sat you on your feet and you made a fail a couple of times, but they only, they only did it a number of times until you had to learn to find your own feet. You know, child of God this morning, we have to find our own feet as far as spiritually is concerned. Yes, we have to teach ourselves. We have to do it ourselves. Selves. My mother didn't keep holding me up. I had to find my own feet. Here's the sad story this morning of so many. So many this morning grow old spiritually, but they have never grew up spiritually. Many have grew old spiritually, but they never grew up spiritually. Many people were walking around a little… number of men were walking around a wee village in Essex in England. And they were looking for the birthplace of C. H. Spurgeon. They tried everywhere, and they came to an old man sitting in a, on a summer seat smoking a pipe. One of the men went over to him and says, Tell me this, isn't this the village where the great C. H. Spurgeon, the preacher, was born? And this old man puffed the pipe a couple of times and puffed out a bit of smoke, and he says, no, there was no great Spurgeon man born here, no great preacher born here. Started sucking the pipe. He says, are you sure? Because we have it here that this is the very village where C. H. Spurgeon was born. Puffed the pipe again. And then he gave the pipe. I never smoked the pipe. And, I, and he gave the pipe a wee bang at the heel. You know, that's the way they used to clean it out, you know. He says, there was no great preacher born here by the name of Spurgeon, but there was a baby born here one time called Spurgeon, who progressed and who matured into the great preacher that he was. And this is what the old man on the park bench said. He says, all men and women who are great today started off like the rest of us baby." You see, child of God, this morning it wasn't. No man was born great. We're all born babies. It's how we progress and it's how we mature this morning. You know, I was 20, 22 years married, never used a washing machine. And Tracy, she went off with a banner to Uganda to, to work there for two weeks. And I was taught how to use a washing machine. And I was told that this powder is for the darks and colors, and this is for the whites. And you turn the washing machine to D, and you pull it out, and you let it go. And on your own judge of character, you have to realize, well, will I put the clothes out on the line, or will I put them over the clothes horse? Well, that was good, and I took that like a duck in water. But then she came out with the ironing board. But I didn't take it to a duck in water, and I tell you the truth, folks, I had no notion of taking to the ironing. But that was something I had to learn to do. And I remember picking her up at the airport. And I was driving home at the airport. It was a windy day. I said, hey, Tracy, that's a great drying day. I have a line of washing out. And I never knew what a good drying day was until I reached that standard. But child of God, here's another wee thought. 
Samuel's mother, when she went to the temple every year, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 19, you'll read this. She brought him a new coat every year. Do you want to know why? Because he kept growing out of the coat that he wore. Tell me this, child of God, how far have you come on? How far have I come on? How far have we matured from last year? Have we grew out of the coat? Or is it the same coat that we have had on for years? No growth. And the child, Samuel, grew. You know, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says this, we're to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But then the text says this, you know, it says, and the child Samuel, sorry, and Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. You see, that's the source this morning of proper progress. And the Lord was with him. I can tell you, friend, yes, and Samuel grew. That was the evidence. Ah, but the Lord was with him. That's the environment. Child of God this morning, any plant, any tree has to be in the proper environment for it to grow. It's the same with the believer. Do you know, child of God, Mark Samuel, well, he's a great prophet. From day one, Samuel was in the right environment. Why? Because his mother, his mother brought him to the temple. Thank God for godly mother. I preached not so very long ago, if I can remember well, a message that the Lord gave me on marvelous mothers. Jochebed, she was, she was the trusting mother. She was the mother that trusted the child to the Lord. You remember Eunice, she was the, she was the teaching mother. She taught Timothy the Scriptures, which were able to make him wise unto salvation. You remember the Shunammite mother, she was in second... Kings verse 4, and she went and pleaded with Elisha for to come and to raise up her boy from the dead. She was the pleading mother. But do you see Hannah? She's the influencing mother. God bless godly mothers, you know. There's many a mother who were the greatest influence to their children. And there's many a mother who used to get their children up and get them their breakfast and dress them and have them out to Sunday school and have them out to church. And the father in the half time never bothered his head. I've heard too many testimonies saying it was the godly mother. Thank God for mothers who are an influence on their children. And Hannah was a great influence, you know. She was a great influence. From day one, she brought him to the house of the Lord. It was the mother that brought him there. And you know, child of God, this morning, you see them wings that you have, you need to get them where they're going to be influenced. It's lovely to see us bringing them out to the Sunday school. It's lovely to see him coming out here in the adventures and the youth club and the Bible class and all these things, child of God, are here so that we can influence your children for the gospel and for God. It was there where the Lord spoke to Samuel. It was there in the temple where Samuel grew. You see, child of God, we've got to be in the right environment. You know, since you and I were saved, you and I developed two natures. We, de we, de we have what we call the spiritual nature, but then we've got the natural nature. We've got the new man and the old man. And the whole checkpoint of this morning is this. Tell me, what nature of yours is blossoming this morning? Is it the natural man or the spiritual man? Is it the natural person or the spiritual person? Because whatever environment you're in will cause one or the other to blossom. You see, child of God, we need to be in the right environment. 
You can't grow as a Christian running about with the world. We need the fellowship. We need the fellowship of God's people. I'll tell you from day one where I started to grow was on a Monday night in the home of Bertie Brush and the home of Victor McKeown. It was month about I joined the local faith mission. And it was there every Monday night when we got together around the Word of God. Some brother would give a word, then would pray. And I can tell you, it was in the home of Bertie Brush or Victor McKeown. Both, of the, both homes uh, held the meeting month by month. And I can tell you, it was there where I grew. We need to get ourselves, child of God, into that environment where we can progress properly and where we can mature spiritually. Young Samuel had everything going for him because he was in the right environment. He was being enriched in the right environment to grow and to mature into the great man he was. God was with him. When our Rebecca and Nathan were babies. Their first bottle was SMA milk. I do remember that. SMA. But unfortunately, too many believers are still on the SMA milk this morning, Sunday morning attenders. You can't grow like that child of God. You cannot mature on that this morning. Samuel was continually in the house of God. He was continually in the presence of God. He was continually encountering God. He was continually engaged with the Lord. He was continually enriched by the Lord. Child of God this morning, are you maturing in your spiritual life? Are you growing? Is there evidence of growth in your life? Is there evidence of growth in my life? You see, we need to be in the proper environment if we're to grow spiritually. I want you to take a look at that text again because maybe here's just as much as important as any of the other two points. Look at verse number 19 again. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And here's the last wee bit now. Are you listening? Read it carefully. It says, And did let none of his words fall to the ground. That's the soundness of proper progress. And Samuel grew. That is the sign of Samuel's proper progress. And the Lord was with him. That's the source of Samuel's proper progress. And let none of his words fall to the ground. That was the soundness of Samuel's proper progress. That he let none of his words fall to the ground. Every word that Samuel spoke came to pass. Do you remember? You remember the part of the passage? First Samuel chapter 9, verse 6, you'll read, Saul and his servants are away out looking for Kish's asses. They've gone missing. They've searched here, can't find them. They've searched there, no sight of them there. And they've searched everywhere else, and there's no sight, no sound of them. And they came onto a city. And the servant of Saul says, There is in this city a man of God who is an honorable man, who every time he speaks, every word comes to pass. You know, that's the extent of his maturity. 
Every word came to pass. Listen, Samuel was living and Samuel was serving in the midst lying lips. He let none of those words fall to the ground. You know, child of God, the great sense and the great source of spiritual maturity brings you to this point where every believer's word should be their bond. If you're saying one thing and you do another thing, you're letting your words fall to the ground, brother. I have seen it too many times in business. I mind ringing it more, more than more than I can remember. A boy's bill due to be paid, me ringing him up and says, "Hello, such and such. I'm just ringing you to let you know that your bill, your bill here's now due." Oh, that checks away in the post. It'll be with you tomorrow. And here's me watching for the postman coming. It never appears. And I ring him on the Friday. I didn't get that wee. Do you know? I forgot to send it. And the same boy told me he sent it. I'm telling you, dear child of God, this is the soundness of maturity. That believers don't let any of their words fall to the ground. If you're going to tell a man you're going to be there, be there. If you're going to tell a man you're going to pay his bills, well, pay, well, you should be paying them anyway. How do you expect people to listen to you if they can't believe a word we're saying? I'll tell you something about Samuel. His name wasn't muck in the country. His name was made. Because Samuel didn't let one word fall to the ground. People would listen to him. People could believe him because every word he said came to pass. Take a good look at verse 9 and 19. Look at the end of it. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. So sad. So many believers fail at this point. Proverbs 12, 19 says, the lips of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Christians do tell lies. Brother, sister, listen to me now. And George McConnell's put himself in this circle as well. I'm including myself in here now. No matter how you tight a fix you get yourself into. And we can all get ourselves into tight fixes. For goodness sake, tell the truth for your testimony's sake. My father drilled this into me. He says, honesty will cost you. But it will pay in the long run. And I'm going to finish with this one now. Look at verse 20. Because there you've got the splendor of this proper progress. Look what it says in verse 20. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. That's the extent. It was noised abroad concerning the godliness of his character. Concerning the godliness of his life. Concerning the soundness of his lips. And Samuel grew And the Lord was with him. And let none of his words fall to the ground. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 19 is the perfect path for proper progress that leads us to spiritual maturity. May God search our hearts. 
And may God, through conviction and power of the Holy Spirit, enable us to be the spiritual, mature, Christ-like believer that God demands us to be. And may the Lord bless and press that word to our hearts for his holy name's sake.